Diane in Denmark here, another little just for fun video. I'm making up some savoury shortbread, some cheese shortbread. You know, shortbread comes from Scotland. And I was making up uh, because I'm going to be putting it into the freezer. It's a really good thing to have on hand around Christmas and the holidays. And I've been making this recipe for a long time. And the, usually when I serve it, I don't really serve it the rest of the year. Um, but we normally have it around New Year at Hogmanay, you know, New Year's Eve. Um, and in Denmark, New Year's Eve, Hogmanay is a huge thing. It starts at six o'clock in, in the evening and you've got to be standing up with your glass of champagne. Uh, you know, the men all nicely dressed and kids, everybody's got to stand up. And you watch the Queen's speech in Denmark and... This is a really good thing to eat with your glass of champagne when you're watching the Queen's speech. And then you go on to your, your three or four, um, three or four uh, course meal and then, you know, the fireworks uh, start. And anyway, I'm going to show you how to make these. Let me just grab my penny. I've already washed my hands and I, I, I feel kind of silly sharing this recipe with you because it's so darn easy uh, but there you go you know what often the easiest things are the best things and it's just like a normal you know if you were doing a scottish shortbread so scottish shortbread and i'll actually be giving you a recipe for a christmas one that you can make but anyway let's come with the savory one first uh, shortbread is normally three three parts uh, you normally have your flour just plain flour um butter lots of lovely butter and sugar this is a um, savoury one, so it's cheese. And see if you can get, you know, some kind of a fairly good strong cheese because um, I know at least in the States you have a lot of weird cheeses that kind of taste of rubber. Anyway, if you can get some good Scottish cheddar or Irish cheddar, that's great. And now, this is already grated because I happen to have a bag of grated stuff. But you can just chop up any kind of cheese, um, you know, any kind of hard cheese that you have left over or um, parmigiano, you know, parmesan cheese, anything with a good flavour. And all we're going to do, you're, you're going to need to have a mixer for this because otherwise, otherwise you need to do the rubbing in method. And I never do rubbing in method. I, just the very thought of it, and I think, no, nope, don't have time for that. This is the very fast method, fast and easy, and that's what we're all about. So, I've washed my hands, and I'm just going to plug in my mixer. Let me see if I can get this over here. Open it in a wee thing there. Right. And just like with sweet shortbread, it's the same amount. So, I've got... Um, I measured it and I think it was like 250 grams. It was a wee bit more because I was using up what I had in the packet. So I've got 250 grams of cheese. Uh, this is 250 grams of butter. It's a packet of butter. And listen, you don't need to make this amount. You can make like, you know, uh, you know, one stick of butter and then whatever the equivalent is in cheese and flour. You know, you can do 50 grams of cheese, 50 grams of butter, 50 grams of flour. Just keep them equal, whatever, and, and this is a great way to use up, you know, any cheese that you've got left, any butter that you've got left. Right, I'll just get a knife. And I'm just going to slightly chop up the butter, but the machine's going to do all the work, so don't worry about that. And you know me, I always jump over the bar <laughs> where it's lowest. Right, and with that... Butter. Come on. Ah. Right. Get in there. And then I've got the cheese. I hope it can all be in this mixer. Soon find out. If you're actually watching this video, I can still see it then. It's obviously worked out, otherwise I wouldn't have uploaded it. Right, and then I need 250 grams, because I'm just doing equal parts uh, of flour. Just let me get my scales. I may even be able to tell you what that is in ounces in old language, in imperial. 
I really cannot get my head around imperial measurements, all those things are much better in grams and kilos. Makes much more sense dividing my time. Right, hold on, let me 250. A wee drop more. There we go, okay. Slightly over. Let me see if I can just try and put that into other measurements. Nah, okay. Anyway, the same amount of flour. Let's just get a spoon. So I'm not going to be spilling it all over the counter. Yeah, it's going to fit in here. Now, if you want, um, especially if you're in the UK, you might have some uh, mustard powder, you know, the, the um, Coleman's mustard powder. You could put in a wee pinch of that. Not necessary. I'm actually going to add in some chili flakes. And you don't need to do this at all. You know, you can just do it with the, with the cheese. But it gives it a wee bit of a kick. And I don't have any mustard powder, so... Chili flakes. I'll also look nice. Thanks. Baked. Right, that's that done. Okay, lid on and let's see if we can get this moving. You might want to put on your uh, earmuffs or your headphones right now. This going, uh, I'll maybe switch it off because otherwise you're just going to be listening to the whirring. You might want to go off and do a swish and swipe, okay? So just hold on. Right, we're just about there. And I had a wee check. I can't see any obvious bits of butter left. I'm just going to use my spatula to get rid of get the last bits out of here. Now at this stage, because the machine has, uh, you know, kind of heated it up, it's a bit gooey. Get that out of the way. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to make it into a little log and put it in the fridge. So let me get some... And if you've got, um, you know, if you've got cling film, use that. I hardly ever use cling film. I just find it too, too difficult to work with. It's kind of bad for the environment, so I don't buy much of it. Right, let's see if I can get this out. And I realise that this uh, machine that I've got is not as powerful as the old one I had. It's slightly smaller. So I think next time I will do it with a bit less mixture and it had a bit of difficulty getting to get together. But anyway, hey ho! If you never try these things, you'll never find out. I'm sure it'll taste the same. Yeah. And you can see the mixture here. It's gonna kind of pale yellow from the cheddar. Let's see if I can get this out. And it's very, it's very gooey at this stage. That's not, it's not going to be easy to work with. I suppose what you could do if you wanted, um, you know, if you wanted to use it right now, you could just take little teaspoons of the mixture, you know, put it on a um, baking sheet and flatten them out a bit uh, and cook them immediately. But it's really best it goes into the fridge or the freezer to chill. There we are. Mm. We're making a right dog's breakfast of this today. Hey, this is live television. You know, we're it's a live recording. It's not like on TV where they can edit everything out and we've got somebody doing the washing up afterwards. Oh yeah, and just a wee word before you do any kind of you know Christmas baking stuff, 
make sure you know that you've got your routines done and that you know what's for dinner. I know what I'll be having for dinner. I'll be having some more biscuits or crackers. Right. Okay. I think I got most of it out. There we go. Right. And then move that out of the way. See, there's our mixture. And I'm just gonna form it slightly with the greased wood paper. Now, you can make it into, you know, kind of square shaped, uh, rectangular log or very, very round. I'm, I'm not caring about it being, per, you know, perfectly circular. like a wee, uh, a wee cracker, like a Christmas cracker, and put that in the fridge to harden up a bit. And if you want, you can go off and uh, maybe camper for a wee while, or certainly that's what I'm going to do. So I'll stop the video here and then you can see it uh, when it's all hardened up and I'm going to slice it and put it in the oven. And uh, meanwhile, while that is in uh, the fridge, I'm going to do a poopa, you know what a poopa is, pick up and put away. So I'm going to clear the decks so that I've got no kind of work uh, to do later. Yeah, but please, you know, clear the decks as you go, get everything in the dishwasher, hand wash it, so that you can sit down later and enjoy a cup of tea with one of these. Right, okay, I'm putting in the thing and I shall see you just in a minute. Okay, and we're back. It's getting dark outside here in Denmark. Uh, I checked the um, the shortbread, the cheese shortbread dough, and it's chilled. Uh, and I, I sliced it just to make sure. At this point, what you can do is you can actually just put it in a plastic bag, uh, label it, and freeze it. Because when you come to cook it, it's actually best that it it's really um, hard because then you can get some really good thin slices from it. But I'm going to bake uh, a few short, cheese shortbread biscuits just now so you can see what they look like. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to smell them. But anyway, I've got the oven on. I've got the fan on, if you can hear the fan going in the background. Uh, and it's 190 Celsius, which will be, gosh, about 370 Fahrenheit. You, you might have to Google that. Anyway, I've got my, my log here. And as I say, I just tested it to make sure it's... Uh, hard enough to, to slice and all you're going to do is, I'll just take this bit off the end and we can add that back in. You're just going to try and get as thin as possible. I can probably get a bit thinner than that but can you see that Ooh, right between the eyes and uh, space them out you know on your uh, baking tray. I've just, I've, I've just put a, a sheet of uh, greaseproof paper on my tray. I'll see if I can get them a bit thinner. Ah, that's a bit better. There you go. You see there's a wee bit of chilli in that one. And if they kind of fall apart a bit, you can just kind of squash them together. You know, these are going to look rustic. You know what that means? It means <laughs> when they're a bit messy. And the original recipe, uh, I'll, I'll put a link uh, to the recipe so you can see exactly what it is. Uh, the original recipe said to do an egg yolk glaze on the top, but you know what, I've never, <laughs> here we go again, I've never bothered with that. And that almost turned out great. Okay, and then you can just kind of squash it back together. And what you've got left over and kind of wrap it again. Okay, so I'm not going to do many today because I want to keep this for around Christmas time. But 
But then the fun thing that you get to do after this is you can add a few toppings. Dry my hands. Uh, and I've got some uh, chili powder, um, some nigella seeds. Uh, if you don't know, here's some nigella seeds there. They're just like little black seeds. They don't, don't really give any flavor. Maybe you can see them there. Um, but they look kind of funky because they're very, very dark. You can see that. And they'll kind of melt into the cheesy shortbread. Do some of those. And then I've got some uh, fennel seeds, um, you know, cumin seeds, whatever you have. You know, and you don't need to go out and buy more of it. You can just add a wee dusting of paprika powder to the top of these and they'll look great. Or, um, in fact, you don't need to add anything to them. I'll just do one of each and get them into the oven. And they're only going to take um, probably about five, six minutes, depending on how thin you've uh, cut them, depending on the cheese. So you want to keep an eye on them. I mean, don't, don't go out and do, you know, 15 minutes of detailed cleaning. Right, let me get them in. Here we are. Ready to go in. And I'm going to have the oven on for dinner anyway, so I'm, I'm not kind of wasting uh, electricity here. So I'm going to set my timer and I'm going to check them in about uh, five minutes and I shall show you when they're finished. And meanwhile, I'm going to do a poopa. Pick up, put away. Right, here they are after five minutes. I've just turned round the baking tray and you can see some of them are almost ready, uh, but these ones are just a wee bit peely wally. <laughs> they're a bit pale. So I'm going to put them in for another couple of minutes and uh, you will see the finished result. Woohoo, they are done. You can see them here. And I'm just going to transfer them to my wire rack and let them cool off. But they look and uh, they smell really good. Nothing better than the smell of, uh, you know, warm cheese. So I'll, uh, I'll cool them off. And the other thing is I've got my shortbread, cheese shortbread dough all wrapped in a plastic bag. I'm going to label it and put that in the freezer and then I will be all set for Christmas. And uh, once they've cooled down, I'll just show you what it looks like inside. So just hold on another, well, just a second in the YouTube time. Okay, they've cooled down and you know what, say the proof of the pudding is in eating. So I'm going to try one of them. I don't know, if, let's, let's hear if they're crispy. Ooh, did you hear that? I'll just have a wee nibble. Mmm. Mmm. They're really, really crispy. And I'm thinking, the only thing that I need now is a little glass of champagne and I'm ready for the Danish Queen's speech at New Year. Anyway, I'll put a link to the recipe in the video information and in the comments. So if you want to go ahead and try your hand at making these. Go ahead and uh, I shall be back very soon showing you a Christmas shortbread recipe uh, with pistachio and cranberry. Anyway, that's it for me, Diane, Denmark. I've got my dinner on the go using the heat in the oven. I'm gonna see if the kids want to try one of these. Right, okay, live long and prosper.